Vink Control Adult EU. Check vehicle history for every used car in Europe. Hello and welcome to another Boost Mania International video. Today we're starting work on a project that's very near and dear to my heart. The PT Cruiser. The design of this car is really controversial. Some people love it, some people hate it. And I truly do hate it. Why did I decide to buy this car? Well, that's a good question. It really has 223 horsepower. The power to weight ratio along with the price of the car basically cemented me buying it. But there's something that needs to get done in this video. Since I hate the design so much, we're going to choose a body kit for the car. But this being an American car creates its own problems. There's almost nothing available, and if it is, it's from America, and it's not legal on European roads. And thanks to the world's situation, it's a problem to even get those parts from America. And it's also expensive. Two to five thousand dollars for a body kit. I've talked to some people at the Technical University of Košice, and we've decided on doing something really cool. This isn't something I even imagined was possible before. So what is it? The guys at Košice University will design a bespoke body kit for the car. And not only one. They'll design many of them, and we can choose which one we like the most. Or we might choose the one that you like the most. Maybe we'll let you, our viewers, choose the body kit. And of course, we'll take your votes into consideration, and we'll choose the body kit that you like the most. But before anyone can start deciding and designing the body kit, the guys at the university told us they need the car scanned and that we should take it to them. The car doesn't drive. And thanks to the current situation, travel is not as easy as it was before. It's almost impossible for us to get this car to Košice. Yes, I'm sure there are some ways we could do it, but we need the car here so we can work on it. So we really don't have a solution. But thankfully, we found a solution, thanks to Hedrick Design for referring us to this person. And you haven't heard the best part. We can 3D scan the entire car right here in our studio. And this is our today's specialist. Hey, what's up? My name is Dusan Boros, and I came here today to scan this car into digital form. We'll be using a handheld optical 3D scanner for this. And thanks to my software, we can rebuild the whole car in a computer program. And the guys at the university can use that as a base. So that means it's going to be a 3D model, right? We just send it to them and they can start working on it. Yes, yes, you're right. We're just copying the physical model into the program and they can then further modify the model. I'm really curious how this process looks because I still can't imagine how this whole thing works. So let's do it. Well, first we have to visually check every panel on the car to see if they are ready for scanning. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this surface is pretty shiny and since we're using an optical scanner, we'll have to make it a bit more matte. We'll use a special chalk spray. We also glue these reference points on the car so that the scanner can orientate itself in space. These points are reflective and thanks to them, the scanner always knows where it is. And why do we need to put these reference points and chalk spray on the car? Does the scanner have problems with scanning on these surfaces? Well, it's an optical scanner, so it works with light. When the surface is too shiny, the scanner can't scan correctly, which results in errors in the final model. It would also be much, much harder to scan. And the final scan would not even be useful. So that would mean the scan would be really imprecise, which is something we don't want. Okay, feel free to start, and I'll come back to look at the progress in a bit. I can see that the light is really nicely scanned right now. What was the problem before? Well, the problem was really simple. A pretty big part of this light was designed to be really reflective. So it was just doing its job. Since the light has a reflective element inside and there was only a thin layer of chalk... Wait, I can probably even show you on the first scan. Or maybe the second one. 
Just look here, it just didn't play nicely. It completely threw the scanner off. The whole model was crooked, so we just applied some more chalk spray, so that the surface is not reflective. And since it's no longer reflective, the scanner has a much easier job of converting it to a 3D model. Alright, so I now have seen you make some scans, the first and second one being test scans. And this third scan is pretty good, but you stopped the scan, so does that mean you'll stitch multiple scans in the end? Yes, I do stitch the final model from many, many scans, but the workflow really depends on the quality and brand of the scanner, as well as many other variables. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to my scanner, with this resolution and these settings, I found out that I can deliver the best result by stitching multiple models together. Which, at least with my software, is really easy. Oh, I see, you just lay them over. Exactly. Every time I'm scanning, I choose a number of reference points. Each scan has to overlap those points with the previous one. That way, the software can easily connect it. Oh, that's actually pretty nice. Then I can just choose three points, which are a part of this point cloud. Because this model is basically just loads of points in space. You can see it clearly when I zoom in a lot. So we just try to use three identical points in both of the models and the software can nicely stitch them together. That's really useful. So you're able to scan the whole car like this, right? Yeah, I can definitely scan the whole car. Or basically any other object for that matter, right? Yeah, without a problem. A motorcycle, a couch. Well, most big objects are scanned with a handheld scanner, like this. But there's also scanners that can scan little things with some incredible precision. If I put the scanner on a tripod, it has an accuracy up to 0.04 millimeters. Mm -hmm. But those scanners are usually only used in high precision applications, like pump internals or flanges. Recently, I scanned a gear from a gearbox. It was not ideal. It would definitely help to use a metrological scanner in that case. But thankfully, I was able to scan it really accurately, so the model could be sent to be fabricated. It was later cut out by a CNC. And that gear is in that gearbox to this day, so we can definitely speak about some precision. Well, I can see we'll be using your services much more in the future. I'm happy to help. If you want to see how the scan of the back end looks like, well, here you go. Let me move it around a bit so that you can see it better. So here we have a scan almost to the bottom. And the whole top is scanned as well. So right now, we have a complete 3D scan of our rear bumper. This is something the guys at the university can work with. Now, when they get this model, they can modify it and design a whole new body kit for this car. I can see you're already putting the reference point on the front side. You mentioned earlier that there can be a problem with the grill. What exactly is the problem? Well, that once again depends on the accuracy, the brand, and the quality of the scanner. But in general, when it comes to optical scanners, they can have some problems when there's repeating patterns. Because basically all the optical scanners use the environment to orientate themselves. And they're much better at that when there's no pattern and the shapes are different. But once we have repeating patterns, like the grill or the spokes of a rim, they can all cause the scanner to spaz out. If you look in here, these ribs are repeated throughout the grill. That means the optical scanner might have some problems with discerning where it is on the grill. It doesn't know whether it is here or there. That's also one of the reasons why we glue the reference points on the car. But the final result always depends on the know-how of the person. There are always workarounds around these issues. For example, you can take a piece of sticky tape and put it on random places throughout the grill. Even a crumpled piece of tape works good enough for this. The scanner just needs a small difference between the ribs to know which one it's looking at. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But it's just like painting the car. 90% of the success is the preparation. And I'm guessing you won't be able to scan the bottom, because it's too low. Well, I can definitely try my best. But I don't think I'll be able to scan it all the way down here. When scanning with optical scanners, it's really important to always scan perpendicular to the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since the front bumper is so low, I'm afraid I'd have to point the scanner upwards to scan it correctly. So what I'm guessing is that we probably need to raise the car up a bit. 
Yeah, that would be great. That way, we can scan the whole bumper. Consider it done. Dominic, our cameraman, can take a jack, and we can raise the car up. Yeah, yeah, I see you agreeing. Did you ever use a jack? No? That's great. I feel so much safer. It's pretty nice that they don't even show you where you're supposed to jack the car up. America, I guess. You probably don't have to film this. So, what am I doing right now? Well, I'm trying to raise the car up and put it on jack stands. All this for a clean scan of a front bumper. So, Joseph is finally doing something. Let's see how that goes. Right now, the whole front bumper is almost completed. The passenger side fog light housing is still not complete, but once that's done, the front end is complete. Yes, indeed, the front end will be finished and we can continue. That's great to hear. But one question comes to my mind. When you're scanning the outside of the car, you can theoretically scan the interior of the car as well, right? Theoretically, I should be able to scan any physical object. <laughs> If the object is shiny or see-through, we have to make it a bit more matte. But apart from that, the scanner is basically able to scan anything. So that means if you want to fit a roll cage in the future, we don't have to find out the dimensions by trial and error. We should be just able to scan the interior. And once we have the interior scan, we should be theoretically able to build a custom roll cage. Yeah, there's actually many ways to go around this. We can scan only certain points, or scan the whole inside of the chassis shell. With that scan, you can have a roll cage fabricated that will closely hug all the pillars. That would be incredible, because this is always a big problem when buying a roll cage. If it doesn't fit your car perfectly, it's really difficult to even get it in. And once you have it in, it's even more difficult to stitch it together in a way that strengthens the car up. Next up on the list is a side skirt scan. And I've tried to scan as big of an area as I could. I've scanned it all the way down to the chassis seam, because the body kit will be connected all the way down there. That way, it's as rigid as it can possibly be. After that, I scanned the whole side skirts, and I also scanned the bottom part of the doors, since those need to be worked into the body kit as well. But the fenders were mostly scanned so that we can easier connect the left side scan with the rear end scan. That's why I scanned a bit of a rear bumper in the side scan. I've added a bit of front bumper as well, so we can connect the front. Now the software can simply just connect them together and we have one big model. And the guys at the university can work with that. And what's the next step now? Will you scan the other side of the car? We don't necessarily need to scan the other side of the car. The whole car is supposed to be symmetrical on both sides, and it also makes it easier to make the future body kit symmetrical as well. So we'll just scan the left side and mirror it to create the right side. Yep. If you ever wanted to have a detailed look at a rust spot, now's your chance. Well, I believe that's a hole. Of course, you don't have to be worried, the car doesn't actually have this many holes. The bottom ones are just parts that scanner didn't catch. But this hole on the other side is physically on the car. So, right now we have scanned the rear end, the front end, and the left side which will mirror and create the right side. But something is telling me this is not all the data we need to create a body kit. What's missing? Well, you'd be right, this is not the final data. We first have to convert this 3D model from a cloud of points, to a CAD model. Mm -hmm. Those can be easily modified. Or rather, companies use CAD models to design parts. But currently we still only have the point cloud. We need the software to connect them and triangulate them. Then we either get a volumetric model or a surface area model. If you want something made by a CNC company, those are usually the models they want. 
So those should be all the documents you need to have something custom made, right? That's right, especially when it comes to CNC machining. They need to plan the path the tool takes through the material. And for that, they need volumetric data. And you're able to do this for any customer if they need it, right? Yeah. Thank you very much for this information. It was really interesting. So, our next step is to send all this data to University of Košice, where they can start working on the many prototypes of our body kit. And I can tell you this much. I literally can't wait to see what they come up with. And don't worry, all the models will be shared through our Facebook site. Anyways, see you in the next video.